Today we'll launch VNS3 from Microsoft Azure Classic and we'll start from the new Azure dashboard but we'll only use Classic resources so if you're still using the Classic dashboard it might look a little different but we'll only use Classic resources. First we'll set up the Azure environment and create a virtual network. Click Add We'll name the virtual network and pick an address space. For this example, we'll do 10.0.0 slash 24. We'll create a subnet for cloud servers, and this will be at 10.0.0.0 slash 25. <coughs> We're using a free trial right now, but you can also pick pay-as-you-go. And for the new Azure, you have to pick a resource group. So we'll name a new resource group, VNS3 group, and we'll start in Central US. Click Create. Once it's created, you'll see it either pinned to your dashboard, or if you go back to virtual networks, it should appear here. Cohesive recommends best practices to use separate subnets for VNS3 controllers and any cloud server instances you have. Remember that your Azure VLAN CIDR can never overlap with your VNS3 overlay network that you make during your setup process. Next we'll go in and click on subnets. Here's our cloud servers. We'll add a new subnet. We'll name this VNS3 controllers. And this address range will be 10.0.0.240 slash 28. Click OK. Back on the dashboard, it should be creating over here in our VLAN. Next, we'll create a net network security group. Click Add. We'll name it VNS3 Security Group and add it to our existing resource group in Central US. We'll pin it and click Create. And once it's created, you can click on the name to see properties. We'll start with inbound security rules. Click on the eyeball to see default rules. The defaults should allow essentially from anywhere to anywhere. And we'll add to these. So the first one we'll add is we'll create priority 100 from the internet to TCP 8000 to tag virtual network port 8000. We will allow it. This will allow VNS3 UI access. While that's creating, we'll go ahead and add another rule. This one is for client packs. We'll call it priority 110. The source for client packs will be virtual network and it will be UDP 1194 and the destination to virtual networks 11, 1194. And here they are. Add another rule for IPsec Isaacamp. Priority 120. And this will be from the IP address of your IPsec device. For this example, we'll say 1.2.3.4 slash 32. And it will be protocol UDP 500 to our virtual network 500. OK. And finally, we'll add IPsec NAT T. Priority 130 to continue the order. 
Again, this will be from the IPsec address of your IPsec device, so 1.2.3.4 slash 32 on UDP 4500 to allow IPsec to our virtual network 4500. Okay. And you'll notice the priority number. The bigger the number, the lower the priority. So the highest priority is to allow VNS3 UI access over port 8000. Now that our security rules are set up inbound, we can go check on outbound security rules, click on the defaults, and you'll notice it allows all inbound and outbound. We recommend to leave it for configuration, and then if you need to lock down your Azure networking, do it after you've deployed VNS3. If you go back to our control panel and our VLAN network, We'll make sure that our subnets are connected to our new network security groups. So we'll click on this. And right now there is no network security group. So we'll click on our new one. You'll also notice when we set it up, you could have gone through it that order as well. So you can do network security groups first or VLANs first. Next, we'll create a storage account that we'll use once we set up VNS3. For deploying in Classic, you can either pick Standard or Premium Performance, and we'll pick Locally Redundant Storage, and assign it to our resource group in Central US. I'll pin it and click Create. Once our storage account launches, we're ready to launch VNS3. You can either launch from the Virtual Machines or Cloud Services, or go to Marketplace. So we'll just search VNS3, and here you have your choice between the VPN Free Edition or Light Edition. We'll select Light. Here you'll see the product information, and make sure down here when you select a deployment model, we're doing Classic today, so select Classic and click Create. Name your VNS3 host. Remember there are no spaces, so we'll use hyphens, VNS3 demo. And go ahead and create a username and password. Um, usernames also cannot have spaces, and passwords must have a capital letter, lowercase letter, number, and or special character. And once we've gotten through all of that, these actually don't matter. Your username and password will not be used again because you will not have shell access to the VNS3 application. So just create something here and no need to remember it. Next, we'll go ahead and select, select sizing. For VNS3, make sure to have at least one core and 1.5 gigs of memory. So A1 should normally suit any purpose. If you want more throughput or have a special use case, you can always pick a larger size, so we'll stick with A1. Click on Optional Configuration, and here we'll add it to our VLAN. Here's our existing subnet. We'll launch it in VNS3 controllers. Next, we'll make sure that our storage account is assigned, VNS3 storage, and click OK. It's assigned to our research group, resource group, and finally, make sure to view the terms and service for VNS3. Click Purchase. We'll pin to the dashboard and click Create. And it will take a few minutes to deploy VNS3. Once your VNS3 device launches, you'll see it either on the dashboard or if you go to Browse Virtual Machines, it should be listed here. Click on the name to see settings.
And here's your public IP address <clears throat> to log in. You'll enter HTTPS colon slash slash your public IP colon 8000 for port 8000 access. Make it a warning, proceed anyways. For your first time login, the defaults are VNS cubed. And you'll be prompted to immediately change your passwords. And log in again. Next, you'll click on License Parameters and either accept the pre-configured parameters or enter custom. Click Submit and Reboot. Your VNS3 will reboot with the license parameters that you set up from the Azure Marketplace. Next, make sure to follow our guides for VNS3 configuration and watch videos for VNS3 configuration.